Hello fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of March 8th, 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. We have such an active sky this week. We will begin this week with two important once a year meetings taking place. On the one hand, the Sun and Neptune are gonna meet in the sky. And on the same day, Venus and Uranus will meet in the sky as well. That will give way the following day to a super moon and especially bright, especially close to the Earth, larger appearing, powerful moon in the sky. And that in turn will give way to Mercury going direct and so much more. So there's so much to talk about here. I'm gonna start with Sunday because when you look at these celestial conversations on the surface, when you look at the sun meeting Neptune in the sky, well, that is an energy of bliss, right? It's an energy of compassion, an energy of rising above our human condition. And then you look at the energy of Venus and Uranus, and that is energy of awakening. But it's happening in the sign of Taurus, which is also very grounding. It is very earthly. But on the surface, yes, they seem to be very different. But I had this very intriguing conversation a few days ago with my friend Sylvia here in Cancun. And Sylvia has been a practicing Buddhist for many, many years. And she was uh, explaining to me and telling me about samsara and nirvana and how they are the opposite sides of the same coin about compassion and wisdom what makes them different love and wisdom what makes them different and how they are also opposite sides of the same coin and so allow me to explain samsara is essentially the word used for the karmic wheel right you think about all the ways in which we go through changes, whether that's in a day, whether that's over longer phases, we will go through time frames where we are beginning again, where there are closures, where there are endings, where there is a rebirth, but also an understanding of a healthy closure. And so in this way, whether it's within one lifetime or you understand this as over the course of several lifetimes, samsara is that sense of the karmic wheel that the earthly experience, the earthly in incarnation speaks to. And then you have Nirvana, right? Nirvana I've spoken of before. It is about rising above the incarnation. It's about moving uh, towards or onwards from whatever our human experience may be and on to the, the next level. It is said to be the goal of Buddhism or of the Buddhist, the practicing Buddhist. But as my friend was explaining to me, you can't have one without the other. It's not that we are necessarily moving through samsara and towards nirvana, but that we can have moments of integration moments where by being present within the karmic wheel, we ultimately find and know nirvana more deeply and vice versa by seeking nirvana, we come to understand the earthly experience more deeply. And this is intimately tied to wisdom and compassion or wisdom and love. Compassion is a genuine desire to connect it is a, a universal type of giving to care about the suffering of another, to not want the suffering of another. That is compassion. And that moves us towards nirvana. And wisdom, well, that's gained through our experience, learning through our experiences. That's with samsara. And somewhere in the middle, there's love, according to my friend Sylvia. Love is when you want someone else to be happy. That's the definition of love, which is different from not wanting someone to suffer. That's genuine compassion. And I thought that this was such an intriguing conversation to find myself in, in the context of the astrology that we have as we start this week. It is the sun meeting Neptune in the sky that represents that desire for nirvana, the bliss of it, right? Rising above just our human uh, experiences and the toll that they can take on us, rising above those things that we call lower emotions, 
and all that's a part of it, whether it's our envy, whether it's our insecurity. It is the sun meeting Neptune in the sky that can be described in one word, and that is faith. Faith that gives way to bliss, that gives way to being plugged into source. Well, that feeling of knowing source, that is nirvana. But we need the earthly condition to get there. And that's what I think Venus meeting Uranus in the sign of Taurus is going to remind us of. I always think of Venus in Taurus as earthly Aphrodite. This uh, is a distinction that was made by Socrates. And in Symposium by Plato, Socrates describes the difference between earthly Aphrodite and celestial Aphrodite. And I, of course, being the nerd that I am, I connected this to astrology. <laughs> That's what the body and the cosmos, my book is all about, connecting Plato's ideas to the astrological sky. But here we have Venus as ruler of Taurus, representing earthly pleasure, being in our physical incarnation, knowing we're incarnated for a reason and finding joy within it. And celestial Aphrodite is Venus in Libra. And that becomes an energy, just like it sounds, uh, more cerebral, if you will. And I'm sure I'll talk about that another day. But then we have Uranus, as is the case this week. We've got Venus meeting Uranus in the sky. Now that connection, Uranus, is mind, but it is infusing mind in the physical, in the energy of Taurus. And whereas Neptune and the Sun are about that bliss, Uranus and Venus meeting in Taurus, that is an awakening that can feel like a thud into your incarnation, into your physical self. The practicalities of a situation bringing us down to earth rather quickly in this case, but still asking us to think perhaps in new ways and to allow our thoughts to see things from new perspectives, but ultimately in ways that change the physical and in some way infuse our lived earthly experience. And I found it really intriguing because these two things are happening simultaneously as part of our spiritual journey anyways, but then to have them both happening on the same day astrologically, I do think that all of us in our own way are going to be examining this sense of the opposite sides of the same coin, where it is in our lives that samsara meets nirvana, where it is in our lives that wisdom comes together with compassion, and where's love going to be in that? Venus is, after all, goddess of love. And so where is it that the awakening is inviting us to embody love more? And what does that mean? And is it that we have genuine love for a person or a place or a situation? Or is it compassion? And which are we going to hold as a higher value? And where's love going to sit between wisdom and compassion? I think that in our own ways, there are going to be a couple of areas of life where we are going to be asked to bring our answers together, asked to honor the process of samsara that we are in, but also to know that nirvana can be found right here, right now. My friend was saying that by being present, by being in your senses, that is where we find nirvana. And we can only be in our senses when we are in our earthly incarnation. And so again, people think that these are very different things, but essentially they need each other. They rely on each other. They're deeply integrated to each other. And, you know, I believe the universe is wise and loving. I believe that everything in the sky is perfect. It is what it needs to be at exactly the moment that it needs to be. And when I look at this Taurian energy right now, asking us to embody, to be present. I have also said in past videos that Buddha was a Taurus. So we can actually, you know, you can go online, you can see Buddha's chart. He was born on the fourth day of the fourth month of the Chinese calendar, 
which puts him comfortably in uh, the sign of Taurus. Now, what is interesting is that in uh, some Western societies, his birthday is celebrated April 4th. So it makes it the fourth day of the fourth month of the Western calendar. But, um, but we know his chart. <laughs> we know that they were using the Chinese calendar back then. And um, it is the teachings of Buddha in many ways that embody the Taurian energy in its highest manifestation and its higher understanding, which is about being with the senses, learning through the senses. Now, what happens when we are so in our senses that we become awake, that we become aware? That is going to be the invitation for all of us. Because the Uranus, if it is anything, it is awake, <laughs> sometimes in an instant, and sometimes uncomfortably so. But then there's still that desire, that soul desire is always there to know bliss as well. And that is going to be part of the invitation as we start this week to find a middle ground. And that middle ground between wisdom and compassion can only come through love. And I do feel that Venus is going to be that conduit for us. The awakening of Venus herself and the Venus energy within us ultimately will help us to make the most of that blissful, inspired, musical healing energy of the sun meeting Neptune in the sky. And so it is going to be the next day, right around Monday, depending on where you are on the planet. You always want to give or take a day on either side. And of course, some people will feel this energy building, certainly as we start this week. I know that just before I started making this video, I was outside looking at the very gorgeous full moon. So this is a super moon. And what a super moon is, is a moon that is happening, or full moon rather, that's happening closer to the earth than it normally might. And it tends to appear larger in the sky than usual. It tends to be brighter in the sky than we usually experience. And just like it sounds, it means that its symbolism is that much more magnified for us. Its importance for us becomes that much more significant. And so you think about lunar energy. Lunar energy is emotion, what we are feeling and having our feelings come forward in sometimes bold ways with the super moon, strong ways in which our emotions and the truth of where our emotions are leading us, which is ultimately our own truth. Well, that can come forward at this time as well. Now, I do believe that it isn't just the fact that this is a super moon that makes it so powerful in the sign of Virgo, but the fact that it is happening in the sign of Virgo, for one, making it that much more an embodied energy, right? Our emotions, when you think about your emotions, you feel them. We feel them within our, our incarnation. They are a physical sensation when we are in our emotion and having a super moon in the sign of Virgo invites us to be that much more present for ourselves and in our bodies to feel emotion in our body. But then you also look at the powerful connections, the aspects that this full moon is making. It has that much more intensity, that much more magnification to it, but also that much more emotion and getting caught up in a moment that is part of what this super moon is promising. So we've got trines. Trines are supremely harmonious energies, right? They, they are thought to be uh, some of the best aspects that you're gonna see. I think the only other thing that is thought to be better is a grand trine, but then it's all about like how you interpret it, and how you see it, I would say, um, because actually squares can be very, very useful. <laughs> squares get things done. Thank goodness for squares, because without squares, um, you know, we're just laying back and, and going along for the ride. But with a full moon like this, there's going to be so much emotion. And yes, it may very well be taking us for a ride, but thankfully the energy is also grounded. We won't get too carried away. There is a balance to be reached here and a balance will be asked to make. So we have got Pluto and Jupiter and Mars, all of these very intense energies adding power adding adrenaline 
And then we have Neptune standing across the sky from this full moon. And Neptune, well, yes, it's blissful, which is great. But then how does bliss reconcile itself with having to come down to earth, having to be embodied? That'll be part of uh, the invitation with this supermoon. But I also think on a more practical level, because that Virgo energy is certainly practical, we are going to have to be mindful of where it is that we are getting very caught up in a moment, where it is that we are over-promising or being um, in a space where we are so caught up in fantasy and hope that we are not allowing a more grounded perspective. So that's part of the opportunity here. We're going to be asked to check in with ourselves again and again over the course of this super moon in at least one area of life. We can see the power move we can make. We can see a lucky break or an opportunity to uh, truly know ourselves, an opportunity to create more, whether it's more wealth, whether it's more passion, whether it's more opportunity. We can feel a heightened optimism at this time, but we just want to be sure that we're not getting too carried away with it. Many years ago, I had one of my own epiphany moments, I guess you could call it. I was sitting with a bunch of friends. Everybody was drinking. I wasn't drinking. And I was very present. I was very in the moment. And I remember having this realization that I felt drunk <laughs> and I hadn't drank anything. And I realized that being drunk, whatever that is, is essentially a state of consciousness. It's like tuning to a particular radio frequency or radio station. And that I could do that anytime I wanted, whether I was being sensitive to the energies around me or whether I just felt like it. I could choose to tune into that radio station and I could ride that high and I could ride that wave and I could get caught up just like everybody else. I could be just as loud, just as, you know, whatever everyone else was doing, I was right there with them. I was doing it, but I didn't drink. So imagine my surprise the next day when I woke up feeling very hungover, like you think about a hangover that's not fun. That's what I was feeling the next day. And that's when I realized that every high has a low. You can go as high as you want if you are okay with the flip side of that, knowing that there will be that price to pay. That was a huge spiritual awakening for me, a huge understanding that, yes, I could tune into any radio station that I wanted, but at the same time, there's also this sense of uh, the universe, just like with the tides coming in, the tides are going to go out. Um, just like there are times of gain, there are times when there isn't that, where there needs to be space created so that the new and the gains can come in. It is part of the balancing of the universe, just like the, the phases of the moon. You can't have the full moon without also having the dark of the moon. It is the dark of the moon and the new moon that ultimately will give way to that full moon. There are times of going in and feeling our emotions more personally before we can really wear them and have them out there. And so when I look at this full moon right about now, okay, I think that there are going to be people who may be invited to ride a wave. <laughs> that might be you ride a wave, decide, you know, how high you want to go. And if you decide to do that, enjoy it. But also know, and I'm not talking about doing something in self-harm kind of way. Please don't think that at all. What I am talking about is being mindful of your own emotions and being mindful of your own energy. Because ultimately, when we talk about for every high, there's a low. Those times when you're high, there's a lot of energy pouring out. Sometimes from all of your pores, right? All directions. And that necessarily means that there's going to be a need for rest. There's going to be a need to go within. You're being really loud. There's going to be times when you need silence. You need to be quiet. We can talk about the need for going within and being silent. That is a collective yearning right about now. 
And I do think that that very yearning may show up at this full moon also. I am thinking about the fact that I recently posted on social media and I announced that one of my events, and you know I love to travel, you know my events, one of my events uh, has been canceled. That's the Bangkok event. Actually, it's been postponed to 2021. So we decided to postpone it. The, the organizer is this incredible, incredible person that I loved uh, meeting and getting to know online. And I can't wait to be in Bangkok in 2021. Uh, you must know, and if you've been watching me for a while, you've seen me make videos from Thailand. You know how special that country is to me, how special Bangkok is to me. And so I was thinking about this idea of how it makes me sad. Yes, it does bring me sadness to have to cancel an event. At the same time though, there's fear right now. And there's this sense of people wanting to isolate. And I don't think it's necessarily about just um, what we're talking about as a collective, what I talked about last week with uh, COVID-19. It is a spiritual urge to go within a spiritual urge to be silent, to isolate. And just like with the tides, just like with the highs, what that means is, yes, right now we may be going within, but it means that that much sooner we will get to that place where we're able to be that much more together. We're able to be that much more integrated. Just wait till Jupiter gets to Aquarius. We will be really getting together. A whole lot of people out there are going to want to be getting together, adamantly so, wanting to be with others, wanting to mix and mingle and know and, and be present. And so that is right around the corner and I will honor that. That is the collective spiritual yearning at this time. And so I honor that. And so how does that fit into with this full moon an energy in virgo an embodied energy at that that on the one hand is feeling all these very intense emotion wanting connection with neptune standing across the sky from it and yet also being able to recognize that desire to go within knowing that for every connection there's also a need to check in with oneself, to be independent. And in fact, independence is a key part of any partnership. You can't come together with others if you don't also bring you. You gotta bring yourself to it. And so this full moon I think is captivating, it is intriguing, and speaking about getting together with people, under the light of the full moon on Tuesday, Mercury will go direct in the sign of Aquarius. So we have had this Mercury retrograde season playing out since the first days of February, so the beginning of February. That is when we stepped into Mercury retrograde season. Mercury officially went retrograde back in February. And now Mercury will go direct. And most of this Mercury retrograde season is spent with Mercury moving through the sign of Pisces. But Mercury is also dipping in and out of the sign of Aquarius, like right now, Mercury's in the sign of Aquarius. And we'll go direct here. And I find it very intriguing that this Mercury retrograde is connecting two different areas of life for all of us, connecting two different signs. The energy of bliss and compassion that is Pisces, is also connected to with this mercury retrograde season we are being asked to integrate it to the energy of mind the energy of interaction the energy of connection and so i do think that the desire the the adamant desire to understand what it means to be connected to others and especially to connect on levels of mind well, we're going to see that come up very strongly for the collective under the light of the full moon with Mercury standing still in the sky and technically going direct the very next day. That Mercury direct is an important time to watch. There's always clarity that sets in with Mercury direct. 
but given the sign that mercury is in that mind level clarity is going to be that much stronger it's going to be that much more likely all of us are making some connection or seeing two sides of a situation but remember aquarius is also a highly independent energy it's two waves reflecting each other it has a strong duality to it i spoke about this in the decade ahead video where i talked about the age of aquarius and so we have this very strong duality playing out on the one hand it's a joiner on the other hand it's like i'm going my own way it cares about humanity because it cares about itself it wants everybody to be themselves because it desires to be itself authentically independently eccentrically rebelliously itself and so this is an opportunity for all of us to know our truth what it means to be ourselves to decide what that truth is going to be and how now are we going to take that truth and how is that going to connect to others how are we going to integrate that with others how do we fit in with others in a time that can feel as if more and more people are wanting to go within and are wanting to isolate how do we keep our connection strong for ourselves to honor the fact that we as human beings we are social creatures we were created to be together it is a decidedly unnatural condition for us to be separate from each other it is a very modern phenomenon for us to live in the isolated and alienated ways that we do even when we live in big cities this is something discussed at length by max weber uh, considered the godfather of sociology he called it the iron cage of postmodernism this idea that we live more and more dense but we feel more and more alien from each other from nature from ourselves it was my professor Patrick Curry who says that astrology connects us to each other by connecting us to the planets we connect to each other we connect to nature it is the answer it is the solution to the iron cage of postmodernism according to Patrick Curry and so what is your unique answer going to be that is what Mercury direct could help you to find out and then we spend the rest of the week integrating this knowing, integrating this knowledge and taking action to support this. We will have beautiful connections playing out right around Wednesday. The sun will speak with Jupiter. This is some optimistic step that we may take to improve our circumstances, to move ourselves in a positive direction. At the very end of the week, the sun will speak with Pluto. That is um, positive energy and steps we take to create meaningful transformation in our lives whether it's by connecting with others whether it's by understanding ourselves there is a transformative energy on offer a power energy on offer if we will embrace it and run with it that's the thing this is a type of conversation I spoke earlier about trines this is what astrologers call a sextile it's more empowered because it gives you an opportunity to take action to move yourself in the direction you choose and then experience blessings as a result so yes we can be a force of positive change in our lives and the lives of others if we take action as we will be inspired to do and the inspiration is strong at the end of the week as mars connects with neptune that is all about inspiration that is about feeling music feeling spirit the energy of healing and again that we feel that is embodied that connects to adrenaline the commitment and the determination to move towards more inspired and more blissful circumstances well all of that finds us as we get to the end of the week what i love about this week for us well look there's so much here but i am going to say i just love the full moon that full moon is so special the super moon that is taking place it is going to invite us to find power in the details 
going to invite us to observe our own behavior. What do we do again and again? How does that demonstrate what we really want to do and what we're really good at? All of us can be good at anything, really, if you're willing to do it again and again. This goes to um, Malcolm Gladwell in Outliers. He talks about this idea of the 10,000 hour principle. Anything you do for 10,000 hours, you are an expert at, according to Malcolm Gladwell. And that's how I see the energy of Virgo. It is about the energy of putting in the time, of showing yourself again and again that you know what you're doing. When you do that, you've demonstrated again and again, you know what you're doing, you're good at what you do. There's actually a very deep and quiet confidence in that. But it's a confidence rooted in faith, the faith in who you are and what you've shown yourself about yourself again and again and again. You can have faith in that. You can have faith that there is something that you are uniquely good at. And now take that, connect with it, feel it, hug it, know it. And as you come to know it, this full moon is going to invite you to go out and live it. Well, thank you so much for watching. Please like, please comment, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell so you know exactly when videos uh, are uploaded. It does mean so much. And of course, if you want to know how all this wonderful stuff this week, all these aspects I spoke of, how do they speak to you and your sign? log on to nadiashaw.com, sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and more, all of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. Prayers to the sky, prayers to the sky is coming out in a week on the 15th of March. This book will be officially published, available everywhere. I hope you absolutely love it. Prayers to the sky to know and to love the astrological planets more deeply. This book is very near and dear to my heart. It honors the spiritual roots of astrology. You can't have astrology without spiritual traditions. It is very recently in human history that astrology became separate from spirituality, became separate from religious traditions. Uh, that is a very recent phenomenon with the discovery of the outer planets that began to happen up until then. And still now, many systems of astrology honor the sacred and spiritual and soul roots that astrology is, that astrology represents. It certainly is that for me. It is a powerful spiritual practice to me. And this book gives you a lot of insight into um, how I understand it in a practical way, what it means for astrology to be a spiritual practice. Uh, each of the chapters has um, an explanation and exploration of the creation myth to each of the planets. Um, it opens with one of the uh, traditional hymns, a Homeric or Orphic hymn to that particular planet. Each chapter ends with a prayer written by me to that planet. We've also got basics of astrological timing. And really, you can think of this as astrological magic light, but more accessible and more about you connecting with the sacred energies that you are an expression of, that you are a part of. And so this is a book very, very near and dear to my heart, something that, um, that just, is it's like my heart in a book is how it feels and so i hope that you absolutely love it thank you to everybody who's already ordered and if you want to get uh this book on pre-order on amazon now you can and if you do and you forward us the receipt then you can join our study group the study group pass is valued at 60 dollars us and that is us getting together online every month and in practical ways going through each of the planets. And so we already had like two weeks ago, our very first session, you'll get downloads. If you can join us live, great. If you can't, you can get the download. I know that people have said how much they love the meditation and how glad they are that they do have the download. And so you can still join us. You can still be a part of prayers to the sky. You do got to order the book 
this week, pre-order on Amazon, link in the description below. And if you do that, then forward us the receipt and you can join the study group. And we're gonna have a lot of fun together over the course of 2021. My next book coming up is The Universe is Wise and Loving, Volume One. This is on the nodes of the moon in astrology. It is my take on the nodes of the moon and how I see them as a powerful uh, way to explore how it is that the universe seeks to align you with greater love and greater wisdom in this life. And I go through each of the um, signs, I go through planets and aspect to the nodes. So I really hope that this is one of those reference books that you come back to again and again. It opens with my understanding of the nodes, how I use them, how I understand them, and how important aligning to love and wisdom is to me and why. And so again, I hope you love it. The advanced copies are now available for sale on my website at nadiashaw.com and I will link to it below. And if you get the advanced copies, you get a bunch of free gifts valued at uh, up to $200, just over $200. So that's the free gifts that you get. And then you'll get the advanced copy as a signed book from me in May, which is like up to three months before you're gonna be able to buy it anywhere else. So this will be available for purchase wherever books are sold August 22nd. So you get it nice and early in May, you will get a chance to get your hands on The Universe is Wise and Loving Volume 1. So I hope you love it, of course, and that you uh, are enriched by it as with all of my books. And again, advanced copies are on sale now at my website, link in the description below. Events coming up. I have a huge online event, the Equinox event with Synchronicity University happening March 21st. Two classes plus Saturn moving into Aquarius party, all of that taking place over the course of one day, Saturday, March 21st. I will be teaching on Saturn in aspect to planets and chart points in the chart. And then the second class is going to be on Chiron through the signs and houses. So we are gonna enjoy ourselves. We're gonna be learning astrology in practical ways, in ways that you can use immediately. And again, I hope you absolutely love the Synchronicity University first ever Equinox event taking place online. You can learn more. You can sign up at synchronicityuniversity.com. And thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for seeing me as some part of your sacred journey. And it really is about the sacred journey. Without soul, without love, without wisdom, this experience, this sharing with you, well, that's really why I do it. That's it. And so that's what motivates me. That's what keeps me coming to you again week after week and has kept me here with you on YouTube for how many years now? Like going on 12 years coming up? It's been a while and I have been here and I've been saying the universe is wise and loving since the very beginning. And thank you for being here for this week uh, to be part of that mission that I get to live in the world thanks to you. Thank you. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.